So let me just underline this point. The, the reason I'm emphasizing this point about expansion of credit versus, versus strict quantity, this is about discipline versus elasticity. Okay, this is the concrete place where, where it is. So you can imagine that, and, uh, and I put this in the notes here, you can imagine thinking about a world in which there's a fixed quantity of money here. A fixed quantity of money, and at any moment in time, um, we can therefore describe who has the money by a point. So this is time here. And there's a pattern of trade between you and me, and it goes like, you know, like this as we're, as we're trading, that this is your, your money balances and this is my money balances. And so when, I, when, when my money balances are going up, that's because I'm selling some goods to you. When my money balances are going down, that's because you're, you're selling goods to me. But the total money isn't changing. Total money isn't changing. If there's not very much money, okay, then people run out of money. Okay? And some, some transactions that, that we want to make are impossible to make because you don't have the money to make them. That's discipline. Similarly, you know, if it, if it were here. The pure credit economy, we could think of it as starting at zero instead of starting at a half of the money supply. And similarly, there could be some, I'm going to see if I can copy that a little bit. Okay. This is zero here in the pure credit economy. And let's just put, and you can see that in this economy, um, this is maybe my credit limit here. And maybe this is your limit here. Okay, that uh, this is me borrowing from you. This is you borrowing from me. This is me borrowing from you on net, back and forth. And so the transactions involve. And sometimes there's no credit, right here along zero. The credit all goes down to zero. And sometimes it expands in order to facilitate transactions. So there's expansion and contraction of of credit in the course of of of. Uh, the pattern of payments. There's no expansion or contraction of money here. There's just shifting from one pocket to another. If we don't, if neither of us is willing to uh, lend or borrow to the other because we don't trust each other, um, then we could have the bank here describing this. This is my limit. The bank is willing to lend me up to this, but I'm actually willing to lend the bank, you know, any amount of money conceivably, a lot more than you, you know, a lot more than I would lend to you. Uh, so I can build up positive balances very large, um, and, uh, and the bank can do business with many people as well at the same time. So this, tri this multilateral this multilateral system is a, is a credit system. So th this is the first point to emphasize that, and we're going to go into this in more detail with actual instruments and Fed funds and all of that sort of thing. But understanding that the payment system is a credit system, okay, not a money system, and that it has to be a credit system in order to have sufficient elasticity to ensure that people who want to make mutually advantageous trades are able to make mutually advantageous trades, even if none of them have money at the moment. They don't have any gold or the thing that's fixed in quantity, the discipline thing. Okay, credit is necessary in order to facilitate elasticity in the, in the system. And so when you go look at the actual system, expect to find credit there. It's going to be there. We're, we're going we're to see it. Sometimes it doesn't look like credit. 